Hello and welcome to this episode of Gentleman Crafter TV with me, John Bloodworth. Uh, this week I'd love to show you how to use the adorable scoreable, adorable scoreboard, uh, to create box frames for perhaps card fronts or for creating projects in themselves. What I've done for you is really sort of gone to in-depth detail of how I've created the box frames themselves in three different sizes and styles. Then I've given you a free download of a spreadsheet that will help you work out the exact size of cardstock you need to cut for the box frames and also the where you need to score the lines. And then in the final part of the video, I've given you a designer idea that I think you'll love. So without further ado, it's on with the show. So here is the scoreboard, nice big size to work on, meaning I can use my 12 by 12 sheets and a fabulous little book. Um, that I've been taking a look through. But um, what I want to share with you today is how I go about making a box frame. So you can do this with any size card and I'm gonna start with um, some A4. You can use square card, you can use um, all sorts of other different types of card. And for this first one, I'm gonna use the side that's got the um, inches on it. So I'm going to position my cardstock up to the point where the two zeros meet, the top left hand corner. And I'm going to make four scores on each edge of that cardstock. I'm going to do that about half inch increments and this will mean that I have an even um, box frame width and height. I'll show you later on how to vary this. Okay, so there's my first four. So just so you know, that's at half an inch, one inch, one and a half, and two, oops, and then two, and then rotate. Same again, half inch, one inch, one and a half, and two, and then positioning up against that point again, and we've got half inch, one inch, one and a half, and two. Now I need to make four more uh, lines. This time though, I'm bringing back to the original point, and on my shortest edge, I'm coming in an additional half an inch, and this measurement will be pretty much exactly the same as I've used here. But I only wanna go down to the second score line that I made previously. So I'll go in here, and so that I get exactly the same on the other side, uh, one, two, three, four. I can go in here and make that score line here. And then I'll flip it over and make the same mirror image on this side. Okay, now it's going to be difficult to see, obviously, with um, the colour of the cardstock. But what I will do is leave a picture of this on the blog. Uh, and I'll probably pop one in here, um, just insert it as well. So I'm done with the scoreboard now, so I'm gonna pop that out of the way. Next stage is where we've got the squares in the corner, I'm gonna chop away all of those. You can use scissors or you can use obviously a, a guillotine or a trimmer. Now obviously with score lines, you've potentially got two edges. Go for the edge that's closest to the part of the design that you're gonna keep. Okay, that's those. Now with these two extra score lines, I'm gonna be cutting up to that second score line and then diagonally at 45 degree across to the third score line. So in here and then across there. If it helps, you can come in from a different angle. You can always trim in from here.
Okay, so that's um, our main cut. That's what it will look like. Now do be aware that your box frame, this will be the inside. So the reverse of the cardstock will be the inside. Obviously much better therefore to use a double-sided cardstock. However, it's not a problem. You can always cut another piece of cardstock to fit that will match. So it's up to you how you go about that. I'm going to apply some double-sided tape now. And I find this better than waiting for glue to dry. However, you can use one or the other or even both. Doesn't really matter. And that's going to go along the outside um, edge. Next, I'm going to apply two more pieces. This time, I'm going to turn or flip the um, design over because we've got a hair there. And it's not going to go in that first panel this time. It's going to go in the second sorry the third so where you have those diagonal lines it's going to go across that and make sure it goes right up to those diagonal line edges doesn't matter if you go over we can tidy those up later now what i'm going to do with the uh, bone folder that was included is i'm just going to pre-fold every single one of those edges or every single one of those score lines just to make sure that they'll fold neatly and cleanly when I come to assemble this in just a moment. I'm obviously using Hunky Dory's score, uh, adorable scoreable because it came with the scoreboard however if you have a different scoreboard or if you have different cardstock feel free to experiment and try this out with different um, different card stops or different papers. Right, okay, time to start assembly. So I'm going to do the uh, long two edges first and I'm just going to remove the backing from the double sided tape on this one first this over I'm going to fold and roll this so that this edge meets our last score line in there and then roll the whole thing forward and then stick it in place just hold it for a second so that's the first edge and oops now the second Okay, now when it comes to our ends, we're going to take the tape off the underside and the outside as well. And just make sure there's no ragged bits of tape sticking out because that will actually show on your um, box frame. Positioning the edges so that they make a beautifully crisp corner. There we go, that's one. Okay, and there we have our finished box frame. Nice, neat, mitered corners. Nice, sturdy frame that's going to stand the test of time. Now, I obviously showed this with um, an even border. I'm going to show you next how to do an uneven border. 
For the next version, I'm going to show you how to take the same concept that we used here and do a wider frame on our box frame. So we're starting again with the scoreboard. This time, instead of doing equal spacing, I'm going to do too large and too thin and separate them out. So I'll start here at two, uh, maybe two and a half, in fact. And I'm on the centimetre side of this board, by the way, if that makes any difference to you. Uh, and then I'm just going to put a thin one in here. So I'm going up one centimetre, so that's two and a half, three and a half. So now I want to go up two and a half because that was the same as this one. So half and then one, two, so that's at six. And then another one centimetre. reinforce these scores. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat those uh, four lines all the way around. So we started at two and a half, didn't we? Two and a half, three and a half, six, and seven. Same again on this side. Now we come to those two extra marks. Now these are going to be the uh, these are going to need to be equal to your um, second from the center area because basically this panel will fold up and this will go over. So this will be the diagonal join. So this was two and a half centimeters. So I need to go in two and a half and down. Remember just to the second score line. So that would be one, two, three, four, five notches. One, two, three, four, five notches. Then we'll turn it around. One, two and a half. Okay, time to do the trimming. When it comes to our extra notches again, we trim up to that second line and then across to our third line diagonally. And you can probably tell there's going to be a very thin aperture in this box because we've got very wide panels. You know, if that's the look you're going for, then that's great. If not, what I will do, oh, this looks a bit wonky. Uh, I will show some ways later in the video and on the blog of how to work out how to get a specific sized box frame. <clears throat> and I'll do a little, don't panic, I'll do some maths. Bits. Let's pop the 
scoreboard to one side and let's get my tape. Again, as before, I'm just using um, tape across this third panel that's got the diagonal lines on. And because I've got a wider panel this time, I'm actually putting tape at the top and bottom of it. Okay, time to free score everything. Sides first, as always. thicker your cardstock sometimes the more difficult it will be to get everything perfect <clears throat> but perseverance is the name of the game here okay there we go there's another one and as you can see, just oh no, I've popped it. As you can see, just by varying the um, thickness of those strips, we can get two very different looks. I think the key thing to remember is that all four sides have to be the same measurements. Right, I'm going to show you one more. And this time around, we're reversing the order of which we do the thick and thin. So previously, I will have done a thick one first, and then a thin one, then a thick, then a thin. I'm reversing that. So this time around, I'm going to do um, half an inch, followed by one inch. Then another half inch, and then a one inch. So this 
um, is half an inch, one and a half inches, two inches, and three inches as your score lines. Then I need to repeat this on this side. And again here. Now for our two extras, remember they need to match the width of the uh, second panel. So that was a half inch. So I need to go in half inches and just score down to that second score line. Uh, and then it's four over one, two, three. Next, time to cut.
Okay, so there we have another variation. <clears throat> this one, by changing the direction, or sorry, the order of the um, panels, we've now got a much thicker box. So great for potentially storing candles or whatever you fancy. So they're just three variations, just going by eye and just using our uh, randomness. As I mentioned, I'll show you next how to work out how to create a specific sized frame with, you know, whether you want a specific size aperture, whether you want specific depth. Um, it is on the computer, so I'll take you through there now and we'll do that. And then I've got a little project standing by as well, so we'll have a go at that too. So I promised you a little helping hand with creating specific sized box frames. And what I've done is I've put together this spreadsheet that will help automatically work out what size uh, cardstock you need to cut and where to score your lines. There are actually two tabs and they have two different purposes. So I'll show you the difference. The first tab, base plus frame, is where you're going to type in the base size. So for example, if you want this frame to sit on a six by four card, you'll type in here six and then in here four. It doesn't matter if you want to work in inches or centimeters, you just need to bear in mind that if you're entering centimeters, please only use whole or half numbers. And if you're entering inches, you can enter whole, half or quarter inch increments. So just back to the point, uh, height and width we've put in there. So that's the base size of the actual project. And the frame size, we're going to enter in how tall we want it to be. So how far away from the card the frame is going to sit and also the width of the frame. Don't go crazy and enter massive numbers because it's just not going to work. I'm going to go for a um, half inch frame. Uh, and a sorry a half inch height so it's going to sit half inch above the um, base card and then I'll do the width at um, actually no I'll change that 0.25 a quarter of an inch high by half inch wide so that's going to give us an aperture of five inches by three inches in the center of our frame which is you know fairly ample so we'll use that now, the spreadsheet has automatically worked out that I need to cut a piece of cardstock nine inches by seven inches, so nine inch high by seven inch wide. And once I've done that, it's then telling me that I score line number one at 0.5, line number two at three quarters, line number three, line number four. And then those extra little lines that you saw me making are going to be scored at this measurement here, which is two inches. So now we've got that, we can sort of go away and either jot that down or print this out and use that to create a specifically sized box frame. If, however, we want the aperture to be a specific size, uh, then we can use this second sheet, which is the frame and the aperture measurements combined. So what sized aperture do we want? Well, actually, I've got, a, let's say, a topper that is three inches wide by three inches tall. And I have got, I want my frame to be quite deep. Um, because I'm going to put lots of layers in it. So I'm actually going to say, let's say one inch for the um, depth of the frame. And not too wide, I'll take it at half inch. Now we can see that the actual base uh, of our card is going to be five inches by four inches. So slightly smaller than the previous one. And we're going to cut the cardstock at 11 inches by 10 inches. And then make our score lines according to these dimensions here. So I hope this helps. If you've got any questions, obviously you can leave them on the YouTube page where this video will be stored, or of course on the blog comments where the general post about this um, episode is. You can download this spreadsheet from my blog, uh, gentlemancrafter.com. I will leave a link in the uh, video description on YouTube. And of course, if you're watching this on the blog, the link will be below this video on the actual post. So I've used my spreadsheet to get my measurements and I've got eight by six and a half. I'm working in inches <coughs> and I've got the scoring position as two. So my first, according to the chart, is at half an inch. <coughs> then it would be three quarters. Then one and a quarter. 
1.5 and finally oops oh no not finally that's my next one so repeating these four lines around the other edges two corner mitres so that's at two inches and remember only going down to the second score line now you might wonder why I'm doing them all at this side and not using this side that's because the distance from the zero to the first marker is actually different from either side because you may be wanting to make a box lid or a box base If you try and do it from that edge, you will end up with a um, an incorrect measurement. Okay, so that's that one done. I'll score the other one as well while I'm here. doesn't matter what order you go by the way you can do two sides followed by two ends um, or vice versa as long as those measurements are made in the right places it will still work neighbours.
Um, praise God. Number one done. Frame number two.
go and that's frame number two. Now what I'm going to do is get a piece of cardstock underneath and a hinge and then hopefully I can create a little book opening. So the hinge is going to be um, twice the depth of one of these boxes so it will be half an inch thick and five inches tall I believe. Okay, so I'm bringing in my crocodile. I'm going to create a, a wrap for this so that it has a hinge. So I know that the box frame width is three and a half and its height is five. That was as expected, which is good. <coughs> and I know it's a quarter of an inch deep. So three and a half plus three and a half is seven and two quarters is a half. So I need to cut something seven and a half inches long by five inches tall. So let's go for the five inches first. and bring back my scoring board because <coughs> I want to pop that hinge in excuse me for coughing okay so I know that the first half is going to be three and a half and then I know that I need a hinge at a quarter of an inch from there and there'll be a quarter of an inch past that for the extra um, book frame should then leave me with three and a half. One, two, three and a half. Perfect. Right. So now what I need to do is stick those down, hold it up and stick them down again. So double-sided tape has been buried. I'll grab that out. It's a good job I've got this very thin double-sided tape, isn't it? Because it actually fits a quarter inch is amazing. Now I am doing it so that the centre line here is going to be the hinge, not the outside lines. Uh, yes, I need to put some there too. First one is going on, and it needed to open that way. So the aperture needs to face into the middle. Now you might wonder why I've left these bits of tape out. Well, this is a canny little trick I've learnt a long time ago, and that's that you can potentially make sure everything's in place and aligned and then you just whip out the little holders push down and 
job done. Okay, that's one half. And now for the other. I'm pretty confident that this will be in the right place, but I'm still going to use this same um, trick on this side of the book. Okay. Now I can use the first box frame to slide that down into position and then fold this around, make sure everything is in place, before I whip those bits out, and there we have, oops, hang on, it was supposed to stick there, right, okay, push that in there, there we have our little foldable book or frame. It'd be lovely with the little pictures in it, wouldn't it? Right, what shall I decorate it with? Hmm. I'd better go have a rummage. To decorate this, I used a variety of different things. The first was this floral stamp set. I chose the rose for this particular project and used my Stamp Easy stamp positioning tool to stamp the rose out in grey. I then used some uh, watercolour inks or dye inks to paint the rose. Wasn't too happy with the grey outline afterwards though, so I re-stamped in black. And I think it gave a much better look. I even got a little bit of shadowing going on there as well, which was perfect. I coated that in a glaze and left that to dry whilst it was also being stuck into the box. Some sentiments next, which I stamped out P.S. I love you on two smaller tags, edged them up and then stuck them into the box frame. They look cool, don't they? So there's uh, the inside. Now for the outside. I used a panel of black cardstock to sit another tag on, which I'd stamped this time with love, put it at a jaunty angle and stuck it down. And then I added some die cut flowers from matching cardstock and then finished it off with a couple of gems. And that, my loves, is it. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Next week, I'll be playing with the Screen Sensation screen printing kit and I'll be showing you different ways of using that on both cardstock and fabric. So I hope you'll join me for that one. If you've liked what you've seen and you want to see more of these videos, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel or indeed visit me on my blog and enter your email address and you'll get notifications about everything that I'm doing. Thanks for watching. For more hints, tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.